Hello, I'm Terry Rhodes, Vice President for Quality Curriculum and Assessment. Welcome to AACNU's Next Generation Assessment Series on Assessing Student Learning and Institutional Effectiveness. Today, hosts Tammy Cumming and David Miller speak with Amanda Clark on preparing high school students for transition to college using the value rubrics. Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Tammy Cumming. I'm the Assistant Vice President and Associate Provost for Institutional Effectiveness at Brooklyn College of the City University of New York. Today I'm serving as co-host where we talk about an educator's perspective regarding rubrics. And I'm David Miller from the University of Florida where I'm a professor in research and evaluation methods and I'm also the director of the School of Human Development and Organizational Studies in Education. And it's a pleasure today to introduce our guest, Amanda Clark. For having me. So I'm Amanda Clark. I'm an upper school English teacher at Viewpoint School in Calabasas, California. I'm the department chair emerita and the Dr. William Turner Levy endowed chair for Inspired Teaching. Thanks so much, Amanda, for joining us. We're really excited to have you with us today and talk about your uh, experience with rubrics, particularly from the high school perspective. Uh, you mentioned in your blog that you really enjoyed using rubrics. You found them useful. The students found them useful um, in a lot of your work. We'd like to hear a little bit about that and how that is, has come to be your preferred choice of assessment. Sure. So when I started teaching English at the high school level 22 years ago, I was so devoted to marking up student papers with narrative commentary and to make it more fun for myself, I used different colored pens. However, I discovered after a few years of painstakingly marking and commenting on work that it was overwhelming to the students, especially with the different colors and writing on the back and the comments would bleed through. Um, and I found that I was sort of more commenting on what I thought they should have done than what they actually did. And I found that these comments were not that helpful in helping them improve their writing. So I shifted to rubrics, assigning um, mathematical or excuse me, numerical points for different categories of writing and really separating, separating out the writing process and, and the, the qualities of the good piece of writing. So content, syntax, adherence to conventions of standard, formal English prose, for example. But I've never been quite 100% satisfied with that kind of rubric because it separates the writing process into pieces and implies to the students that writing is an accumulation of different steps. And if a student just corrects all the comma splices in the grammatical category, suddenly the writing piece will be transformed into something magnificent. So it doesn't really get at the holism of the writing process. And that is where I discovered the AAC and U after poking around one more time on the internet about a year and a half ago for some ideas about how to improve my rubrics. And so I really, really enjoyed um, using the AAC and U materials from the value rubrics since then. Thanks. That's that's interesting that you landed there. Um, mm -hmm. We have actually also used them, of course, uh, but they were written for a, uh, a really for a college level uh, uh, students. And, and so I'm just interested, you had said in your blog that you had to make some adaptations and some changes in them. So would you want to tell us a little bit about the kinds of changes and things that were necessary to make it useful at the high school level? Absolutely. So I believe there are 16 learning outcomes ranging from ethical reasoning to global learning. And the three that I found most helpful and most adaptable and important for the high school a writer a student is written communication, uh, critical thinking, and creative writing. So I'm borrowing the specific language, the terminology, the definition of those areas, and also the language of the learning outcomes in the dimension chart to express to the students what good writing is, what strong critical thinking is, and most importantly, it is what is good creative thinking. Um, so many times students will enter my classroom and preemptively introduce themselves by saying, I'm not creative, I can't write poetry, I don't know what to do with poetry, I'm just not a creative person. And then the same child would go to the robotics club or the computer science class and come up with some magnificent solution to a perplexing dilemma thereby demonstrating amazing creative thinking. 
So the definition of creative thinking, which um, removes a very narrow understanding of creativity as someone who can write confessional poetry about the self, and brings it to a much more important understanding of what it really means in the kind of magical capability of the human mind. And by showing the students this is creative thinking, um, it kind of empowers them to go to a text like Hamlet or Song of Solomon or a contemporary novel and really kind of think outside the box and come up with knowledge and ideas that crosses boundaries. And so I really appreciate the way the AAC and U rubrics have helped me um, enrich, enlarge, and somehow make more specific what it is that we're hoping the students will achieve. It's really inspiring to hear about your work, Amanda, with what you're doing with your students and using the rubrics and adapting them is something that AAC and you, I know they welcome and hope that people are using them in a way that's suitable for their context. We've had to do that at Brooklyn College. Um, we're very careful, as you mentioned, and you're really articulate regarding making sure the assignment aligns with the rubric. So we really care about that, I think, in general, with respect to what we call validity or establishing the validity. But David, I think you did something similar that we did at Brooklyn College regarding the value rubrics. Yeah, we took some of those value rubrics and, and had to rewrite them, them quite a bit. We have a state requirement, for example, that has a communication learning outcome. And we noticed that in the value rubrics, they separate oral and the, the written communication. So we had to combine those back together and have the faculty think about that, which, which brings up the issue of, of, for us, it ended up to be a great learning experience about assessment. And it really got the faculty involved in the process of assessment. Um, how does that also, does that also work at the high school level? What, what's the impact of this uh, practice on, on you and or other faculty at the high school? Well, I find the rubric very valuable in helping me plan the year by starting at the end, looking at what the really super big important learning outcomes are and kind of marching back to curriculum, um, quarter plan, and going back to the daily plan. Since I only recently have discovered and been working and playing with the rubrics, I've shared the rubrics with other English teachers and they love them. Um, and so I'm hoping to really um, at some early department meetings, which we'll do probably through Zoom this year, to share what I learned this summer in the calibration training and just some specifics of how I'm using them both in assignments and also in planning the course as a whole. Thank you. That's interesting to hear about all that's going on in your high schools. Thank you so much. It's been great speaking with you. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to next time. Thank you so much.